they stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, we beseech your divine guidance in this meeting. Keep us ever mindful of our obligation. Grant us, dear Lord, wisdom, tolerance, and courage that we may well serve our country and fulfill our trust. Amen. Amen. Uh, move to approve the minutes from the August 15th meeting. Second. Any discussion? Roll. Harrison? Yes. Swedek? Yes. Okay, does anybody have any public comment on any pending resolutions for today? Okay, uh, next up we have resolutions and Jeremy Cinco, our sanitary engineer. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Don't normally get to lead it off, but um, four resolutions for consideration today. The first is authorizing the sanitary engineer to replace the existing HVAC system at the Liverpool Wastewater Treatment Plant through Equalis competitive bidding. The second is authorizing change order number one for the Liverpool Wastewater Treatment Plant concrete replacement project. The third is authorizing change order three for the Medina County Sanitary, um, Medina County Sanitary uh, Speeth Road Pump Station Generator Improvement Project. And the fourth is authorizing the Sanitary Engineer Department to purchase a four by four single rear wheel drive pickup truck. That's it. <laughs> Move to approve the four resolutions. <laughs> Second, discussion, <laughs> roll. Harrison? Yes. Swedek? Yes. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. Next up, we have Denise Testa from Planning. Good morning. I just have morning. one resolution for your consideration, authorizing the submission of an application for the Lead Safe Ohio program. Move to approve. Second. Discussion? Roll. Harrison? Yes. Swedek? Yes. All right. Thank, thank you, you Denise. Denise. Next up, we have Holly Murin, our Human Resources Director. Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. On our personal changes resolution today, we have two new hires, one at Job and Family Services and one in Maintenance. Four rate increases, one in Commissioners, one at Dog Shelter, one at Job and Family Services, and one at Office for Older Adults. Three leave of absence at Job and Family Services, one return from leave at Job and Family Services, a probationary removal at IT, and one resignation in transit. Move to approve. Second. Discussion? Roll. Harrison. Yes. Sweating. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Holly. Next up, we have Brett Thomas, our finance director. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. It's so weird to see that seat empty over there. <laughs> Um, I have a short bill for you today, only seven resolutions. Uh, the first one is uh, amending appropriations, so increases of appropriations to various funds. Um, our second resolution is transferring appropriations in between funds. Our third resolution is uh, transferring funds from various departments over to the gasoline fund. Our fourth resolution is the creation of the Sheriff's Opioid Response Team Fund, uh, as well as authorizing its appropriations for the year. <coughs> Our fifth resolution is a donation to the Medina County Fair Board from the Probate and Juvenile Court. They had some audio video equipment that uh, they have upgraded in the move between the courts, and so they're going to pass that on to the Fair Board. Our sixth resolution today is uh, expenses of county officials for uh, conferences. There are no out-of-state travels this week. Our seventh resolution and final resolution is our weekly bills in the amount of $2,443,985.64. Um, As always, copies of all of the bills are kept in the auditor's office for your perusal. I move to approve the seven resolutions. Second, discussion? Roll? Harrison? Yes. Swedek? Yes. Thank you, Brett. Thank you. Next up, we have Chris Jacob, our county administrator. <coughs> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, first resolution this morning authorizes a change order for the Medina County Jail Stormwater Management and Asphalt Replacement Project. This is the third and hopefully final change order for this project, the amount of the change order. $6,807.01. Uh, 
Uh, next resolution accepts and awards a bid, a bid for the Medina County Office for Older Adults Kitchen Renovation Project. There were two bids received. A uh, low bid was submitted by Crown Commercial Construction, base bid amount of $385,907 and an alternate bid amount of $9,959. The architect estimate for this project was $765,000 for the base bid. <coughs> Next resolution approves an extension to an agreement for county facility elevator maintenance services. This is an extension with Kone um, Elevator Services uh, and incorporates the four new elevators located at the new courthouse complex. The monthly amount would be $3,762.95. Next resolution rejects bids for the Medina County Emergency Management Agency Safety Services Facility Renovation and Expan Expansion Project. Uh, the bids were uh, opened, received and opened on August 11th. There was only one bid received. Uh, it was in the uh, amount of 1428000 for the base bid. Architect's estimate for that base bid uh, work was 734000 this would also, this resolution would also authorize a rebid process. Um, I met with the emergency management director and the project architect last week to talk about the rebid process. Um, I, he's working, the architect is now working to revise the bid specs and uh, we should be able to go out to bid advertise September 5th with a projected bid opening date of September 28th. Next resolution authorizes the fee and contract negotiation process for the architectural design and engineering services for the Medina County Veterans Services Building Expansion and Renovation Project. Uh, we issued an RFQ, Request for Qualifications, uh, recently for this project. Uh, there were four uh, submittals from architectural firms. Um, I've attached the evaluation scores uh, that were compiled uh, from the Veteran Services Director, our Facilities Director, and myself. And the recommended firm for negotiation of a contract uh, is Envelope Consulting Services. Um, so with uh, authorization here, we'll start to begin to negotiate a contract and the fee structure to move that project forward. And final resolution this morning uh, establishes a list of architectural and engineering service firms eligible, eligible for the provision of design services for miscellaneous Medina County building projects. We also issued an RFQ um, recently for these services which are estimated to fall within the twenty-five to fifty thousand dollar range. Um, four firms have submitted um, statements of qualification to be eligible for these services for the one-year period beginning September 1st, 2023. Move to approve the six resolutions. Second, any discussion? Roll. Uh, I just, Harrison. I'm sorry. Just, you'd clarified on the EMA and um, you may have said it in there that the, the timeline you said is gonna be into September? Yes. Or the next go around? Okay. Right, hopefully bid opening on or around September 28th. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Roll. Harrison. Yes. Plenty. Thank you, Chris. Thank, Thank you. you. Next uh, up, we have our department updates. And first up, we have Shannon Ryan from Transit. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Going through July numbers, uh, we're looking at Wadsworth uh, still performing strong. I suppose the average is in 2022 of 309. Uh, we got to 535 in the month of July in Wadsworth. So it's the MC Flex in Wadsworth is continuing to not let us down. I'm uh, really happy about that. We're also seeing an increase in um, ridership for office holder adults, and job and family services, which we're working to meet those needs. I will call your attention to a few concerns I have is uh, trip denial numbers. Um, those are almost, they're more than double from last year, same month. So just looking at um, making sure that we can meet the needs of the community. We're, Hopeful that the Medina Flex will alleviate some of that a little bit of um, concern I have there. Um, but another high point is our cost per, mile, or per passenger rather um, 
if you look at the average last year and the same month, 4323, uh, 43, it's 38.63. So we're more efficient, which I'm really happy to see that as well. The team's working very hard to make sure we don't have trip denials, but we're also very efficient at the same time. Um, there's some things going on when it comes to our uh, getting the word out about the MC Flex coming in September in Medina. Um, I've met with uh, several uh, area businesses and, um, for instance, the Career Center yesterday. They're excited about the fact that we're going to be able to include them in our map of the Medina Flex and provide some service regionally to the Medina City area. Um, the last thing I'll mention is our hiring of drivers. Um, just getting the word out that we're looking for part-time drivers. It's important that we have the right people um, and the number of people that we need to meet those needs. So we're continuing to publicize that to um, all channels, social media, posters. Um, word of mouth seems to work really well for us. So that's the last thing I have for this month. If you have any questions? Question on um, trip denial. And yeah. th this may be hard to answer in, a, in the way I'm going to ask the question, which is my intent, by the way. <laughs> Is that generally a, a supply issue or a demand issue? Meaning, is that is it is it do we have if we had fully staffed, we'd be able to have less trip denials, or is it that the demand's coming at a time that we're already at capacity of of drivers and we still can't meet it? It's a good question. We look at that on a daily basis, and we know that Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays are our busiest days. That's where those that capacity is going to happen. So the answer is that question. Yeah. But there is the increasing need out there of the public because we have to meet that need, agency need. We're, you know, we're uh, about 53% for agency, I'm sorry, 53% for the public of our service and 47% agency. So as the agency grows, the public right. may. But it's mainly day-to-day -day on certain days of the week, if that answers your question. Yeah, and you, I think you've mentioned in the past that some of the ways you avoid those is through negotiating or something. That's something absolutely correct. Right. So the, the number that we see, those are, those are people that just couldn't, we couldn't accommodate and we couldn't change and we so the ones that get revised that, that probably brings that number down the negotiation that number would be a lot higher if the team yeah. works so hard to to negotiate with um with our clients and i think the customers um out there that we have um are flexible in some ways in some ways are not and that's right. what flex of that number like if it's a doctor's appointment at that's the scheduled it time. that's yep. it okay that's very it. good thank you thank you Shannon. thank you Next up, we have Debbie Kiley from Job and Family Services. Hi. Good morning. Uh, it's weird. I don't have any resolutions for you this morning, so I'll get <laughs> right to department updates. Uh, so I'll do as customary by division. So for public assistance, the open enrollment period for Medicaid managed care starts in November. So it's a good time to start sharing that message. It's November 1st through the 30th. And all enrollment is done through the Department of Medicaid, but Medicaid members can review their available plans, select or change the current plan that they're on, and they have to do that through the Department of Medicaid. And I'll share this later, maybe in September, October, with Brian to share in the newsletter, just so it's fresher information right then, but I wanted to make sure that you all knew ahead of time. But the address for individuals to enroll or change their plan is www.ohiomh, that's all together, .com and the phone number is 800-324-8680. So county offices, we can assist in information. We actually have some supplemental guides that were provided to us by the Department of Medicaid that's on our website. So those links are available if someone doesn't have internet access or doesn't have access to, they wanna print it out, they can always contact the agency and we can print and send that information to them. It's actually a really nice document that the Department of Medicaid put together. It has all the plans, I think there's one, two, six seven plans so it's a lot of information but they have it in columns where and by does this one provide transportation and if so how far and how much and um, to what appointment so it's a really nice document so we were more than happy to, to share that either it's obviously online but we can print it out and share it with community partners um, and if members do prefer and they want to contact us we can answer those basic questions but we cannot guide them to a, towards a plan we have to be incredibly neutral so all we can do is share information on how to enroll and here's the information that we have so for child protective last month the division took in over 85 calls for abuse and neglect 
we're still maintaining some really high ca case loads. We have 139 children in care. 120 of those are in foster care and the balance are in treatment facilities. We did have a few children emancipate, meaning they aged out of our foster care system, so they are hopefully on their on their way to a better life. And that several children have also been released custody from job and family services and then given either custody back to their parents or other caretaker relatives. And then last but certainly not least, child support. The, the child support division a few Saturdays ago, I believe it was the 12th, they hosted a free family movie night for members in our community. Um, the event was not only to recognize August as Child Support Awareness Month, but in, in my mind, it was to share a more positive experience with job and family services and a better message about who we are and what we do. The doors open to about 100 attendees. We, we had a QR code and as soon as that thing went live, people started registering to attend the event. So it was a really great response for their first opportunity to do this. It was the new Mario Brothers movie. I don't have children, so I don't know a lot about this movie, but the characters Mario and Luigi, they made a surprise appearance. So two staff members were the, the Mario and Luigi. And so the kids went absolutely bonkers when those, those children came out. It was held at the Haddad Theater here. So it was a, a great opportunity for those, for those families. And I just want to give a shout out to our generous sponsors because this event could not have happened without them. Madonna County Domestic Relations Court, Crumble Cookies, Lemonberry Frozen Yogurt, Jen's Play and Learn Child Care, Chick-fil-A, Something's Popping, Sweets and Geeks, Crossroads Hospice and Palliative Care, and CJ, Dan, and Miller. All of those people came together to provide that event for our families. And they gave us um, money to buy popcorn and bottled water, as well as the cost of the tickets to view, because there's a license that you have to purchase for the, for the movie. Um, after the movie, we off offered pictures with Mario and Luigi. They had a little background set up, so families could come with their cell phones and snap pictures, and also goodie bags for the children to take home. And a special thanks to the Sheriff's Office. Uh, their ice cream truck arrived just after the movie and gave frozen treats to all the the family members and Deputy Easterday, um, he was on hand from the moment we were here at 11 o'clock unpacking everything, moving boxes, coolers full of ice up and down, not only the steps, but through the elevator. So he was he was a great help too. And one last note on the event, two child support caseworkers gave this interesting perspective on the event. They stopped into a local theater and saw that prices for a movie ticket were anywhere between nine and $11. And a large popcorn is about $10 and a large bottle of water, one large bottle of water is about $6. So a family of five that we had many registered that were four or five deep, uh, would be looking at spending $61 for five movie tickets, one large popcorn, and one bottle of water to share with all the family members. So thanks to our partners and sponsors, we provided everyone with popcorn, everyone got a bottle of water and their ticket to see the movie, along with a meet and greet with Mario and Luigi, pictures for the families, not to mention raffle back at baskets that we had there thanks to our sponsors, and then um, the ice cream and goodie bags to take home at the end. So I cannot applaud the division enough for what they did. They left no stone unturned. They did a fabulous job at this event. So we're, we're hoping to, to have this event in the future. Hopefully Mario Brothers releases a movie every year and we'll have something to do. That would be uh, popular in my house. If uh, it uh, a <laughs> sequel. <laughs> some talk of that um, question about um, child protective you said 85 calls for abuse and neglect mm -hmm. D do those numbers typically go up with the start of the school year you got it yeah yeah um, typically we are in over a hundred uh, when I pulled up the report yesterday or the day before when we were in the 80s I was like oh, that's right because it's, mm -hmm. it's summer yep. okay thank you Gabby. Yep, sure thanks for everything sure okay do we have any public comments today come on up Please state your name and address. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Jansen Worley. I'm a resident at 4669 Blake Road in Seville. Thank you for your service to our county. I'm a proud resident here uh, for a very long time. I appreciate all the work you guys do every day. Um, I'm here today to share a concern along with uh, several of my neighbors, um, many of which uh, were not able to make it today on Blake Road and Worcester Pike uh, regarding a potential land swap between the Medina County Park District and the Muskingum Watershed Conservancy District. A little bit of background, uh, the Muskingum uh, Watershed uh, currently leases an office from the Medina County Park District on Hubbard Valley Road right in front of Buffalo Creek Retreat. Uh, they have a lease uh, that was signed back in 2015 and uh, now it's an annual lease and they are looking for a home. Um, and they're in the process. Uh, they, they tried to find a location in Seville um, Village. That did not work out. 
They're currently working with the Medina County Park District and have looked at uh, three parcels, one of which um, is uh, on Blake Road uh, across from many of our, um, many of my neighbors' uh, homes. And our concern is every location that they're looking at uh, in close proximity to Hubbard Valley Park is zoned residential. Um, and we have concerns uh, because uh, it's a quasi-government uh, uh, agency uh, with the watershed uh, working with the county park district to swap land. Uh, the site on Blake Road is a 19-acre parcel, and they're looking to subdivide four acres uh, to make it a buildable lot for the watershed. In turn, the Medina County Park District gets approximately 12 acres on Wadsworth Road to gain public access to a piece of land that the park district owns. While this might net positive acreage for the park district, we are opposing it and plan to oppose it every step of the way uh, because the intent of the watershed is to build a commercial building in a rural residential area in Guilford Township. We uh, were made aware of this back in July. Um, we received letters and uh, uh, of a survey that was going to occur, and, and the letter actually had a clerical error on it listing my parcel, which caused me to dig into this a little bit. Um, so we have since uh, been to two Medina County Parks Board meetings, We've been to the Muskingum Watershed Board meeting. We've been to two trustees meetings and Guilford Township uh, um, Planning Commission. And we're receiving a lot of support uh, from our trustees and we're very uh, appreciative of that. I just wanted to briefly share a resolution that we recently received from we our have, trustees. We did get okay. a copy of the resolution. Great, great, right. thank you. Um, so I'm here today to see if there's anything uh, that the commissioners would be uh, willing to do as far as adopting a resolution also uh, opposing this project. Um, there, there's lots of land uh, available um, where this would be better suited. The watershed is in a tough spot. I've talked to them. They need to find a home and they want to work with a government agency and they want to collaborate. I'm a big proponent of collaboration, but I don't think collaboration uh, with getting a conditional use zoning permit and upsetting a lot of residents is a, is a road that we should be going down here in Medina County. Well, let me tell you, we had it under our agenda to talk about this during our discussion session. We, uh, um, Commissioner Ham Hamley unavoidably could not be here today. So we bumped it to next week and we're also going to invite the Park District Director next week so that we can have a full discussion with all three of us with him also present. So I, I'm really grateful for, to, you know, for you to be here today and um, uh, talk on your feelings on this. But we are, as far as the three commissioners go, go we're going to bump it to our next week meeting so uh, Steve can also be here too. Yeah, understood. Thank uh, you for your time. But yeah, and, so. and I would say also the resolution is the type of thing when something like that comes across, right, right. it's going to cause us to, to pay attention to it. So I right. appreciate and applaud the Guilford Township trustees for, for, for um addressing the issue and then and then obviously presenting it to us um i don't know if it was you that had sent it to commissioner hambly or i did yeah yeah, yes, yeah that's did. what i think so once it's on our radar like that then it, it, it does kind of result in some additional um attention so um and i did reach out to nate just this morning okay. to let him know that this would be something we'd be discussing next week and even if we don't if for some reason he can't make it to the meeting that we'll do some due diligence as far as he's concerned in the meantime before the meeting happens yeah. so great we'll obviously be in better position to have that conversation next week Understood. so we appreciate that you came today right. yeah thank you for your time thank you so Thanks. much anyone else would you come up and give your name and address there you go I'm the neighbor straight across where they want to do the land spot. My name is James Carpenter. Mm -hmm. My wife Judy's here. And the reason we're in opposition, first of all, they didn't go through the proper channels to, to do this land spot. They sent us a letter, but they didn't go through zoning or any of the Guilford Township before they started. They spent all this money doing the surveys and everything else. And uh, so I think that's a waste of time or they didn't do the proper channels in order to proceed with this. So that's where we're at. All my neighbors are with me to support it and we're on opposition against it. Like I say, that's gonna interfere a lot of traffic, excess traffic, noise, right direct from us on the park. And that's why we're opposed to this. 
Okay. Yep. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Anybody else have anything for discussion session? Jeremy. Jeremy, come on up. It's been a while. Yes. <laughs> um, hey, uh, you know, we're starting to get close to uh, Veterans Day. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and we have our, uh, it, this would be our ninth annual Veterans Breakfast. Um, we would be looking to have it on Thursday, November 9th. I uh, just wanted to make sure that uh, we had support from the commissioners to, to continue the uh, putting on the breakfast for our uh, county veterans. And Absolutely. Definitely. Perfect. Okay. Well, we'll start getting, uh, getting our employees out there and seeking donations and get moving on that. Thank you so Great. much. Perfect. Thanks, that was Jim. an easy one. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Anybody else? Do you have anything? Uh, I do, well, um, this Thursday is the um, first of three NOACA sessions. Um, it's going to be at the University Center, um, and uh, it hopefully, and I mentioned it, we had a township association meeting with the county last week. I think the, the goal for that would be to have um, the voices of Medina County well represented. There aren't always opportunities to uh, for NOACA to come down and, and, and hear thoughts. Um, they, um, the intention I think is to, to have some kind of a discussion session. It might not be open forum quite like this is, um, small groups and that sort of thing. So, uh, I trust that, that, uh, our county residents will be, will be in attendance there. I'm not going to be able to make that one. I'm going to be at, um, I think the other two that are going to be in the county at later dates, but, uh, I just, that's going to be the first one that happens. And, uh, I'm looking forward to, to hearing the feedback of, anybody who's able to attend that that session so uh and denise will be there on behalf of the the county so um primary topic, primary topic thank you stan i left that out is it's related to the climate action plan so the session is to discuss um i i think the 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 discussion around the next steps for climate action timeline and priorities and and those sort of things so um Nothing has happened in terms of, of approving the climate action plan, and I ask fairly regularly that uh, you know for for an update on the drafting of it. Apparently, no drafting has happened yet. There's been a greenhouse gas inventory that's been completed, um, that that is intended to kind of be the backbone for that. Um, I have some concerns over the greenhouse gas inventory, um, and I've I've actually in the process of putting together kind of an outline of some of those those issues that I'll be circulating to other members of the board in the coming days. Um, but uh, be that as it may, the, the interests on the board are, are kind of moving the, the project forward and this is, this is all part of that process. So, um, so that's where they're coming down to each of the different counties to have these, these sessions to, to talk about climate action plan and priorities. So um, good opportunity for residents of Manana County to share their feelings on that. Hopefully it's well attended. Yes. Anyone else? I will entertain a motion. I move to uh, go into executive session to consider the compensation of public employees. Second. Roll. Harrison. Yes. Sweaty. Yes. Uh, we will be heading into executive session, and we will see everyone next week. Thank you so much.